I watched Carpenter's original Halloween when I shouldn't have. But old enough, still old enough to remember it, watching it like as if it were yesterday with my father, like I've described on the channel. Right? And then <clears throat> I was a fully fledged teenager when, to be honest with you, especially people in the UK, we didn't necessarily watch the original Halloween 2 and then Danielle's sequels. Not necessarily, because we were so hung, up, hung on the original. As I say, especially here in the UK. But everyone did, especially if we were schooling as well. People of a certain age would have been really heavily into schooling at the time Danielle's sequels came out. And we would have read about them in the press and things, and we necessarily wouldn't have watched them. Uh, but, oh, but, at the same time, grieved for the lack of Curtis being in them. So getting Curtis back with H2O. I was like 28, 29 when we got H2O. And to be honest with you, when we got her in H2O, it was equally a shock as when we got her in H40. For me, I never thought I would see Jamie Lee Curtis again in a Halloween movie after she did the original Halloween 2. I never saw that at the time, because I was still underage, heavily underage. When I, but I say, massive fan of seeing the first one. And resigning to the fact of never seeing her ever again, ever again, I had resigned to never ever seeing Curtis again in a Halloween movie throughout my whole teenage years. And then we got her in H2O. To me, that was just as big a... I, I still, to this day, can't put into words the fact that we got Curtis back into the franchise for H2O. Regardless of what anyone may think of the movie H2O, the fact that we actually got her back in the franchise, to me, it's a bigger deal than anyone's opinion could ever be about the actual movie itself. So the, the reason why I am so destroyed, the reason why I was so destroyed and going on to the nature of the video, the fact that I was so destroyed, leading up to it anyway, regarding how the character was dealt with in Resurrection, was because of the said glee about getting her back in the franchise 30 years before. Now moving on to specifically the points of the video now, my battery will probably run out. Whatever we get in the next two Halloween movies, the next two Blue Mouse movies, sequels to H40. No matter how her character is dealt with, if she dies in them, bear with me. And no matter how well, if her character dies in them, and no matter how well if she is treated, if treated in the said sequel, said death in said sequels, even if she's handled really carefully, even if the character's written really, really well, I will always see um, Laurie Strode's death, the death of the character Laurie Strode, and therefore, ultimately, really where Curtis should have left it and where, where her character arc came to an end, yeah? I will always still see it as ending in Resurrection, regardless of how pitiful her character was in that movie. I, I am really frustrated, which is why in my first anticipation videos for H40, I actually mentioned, well, it was, it was specifically the main topic of it, about who owns these movies Hollywood makes, who, who has ultimate say, who has ultimate ownership, who has say, who, 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 who are they made for, why are they made, does it, does it matter who gets, you know, who gets trampled on, trampled on, en route to them being made. Who, who are these movies being made for? Because believe it or not, we do like our movies and we do get emotionally involved in them. That's why we buy them on Blu-ray, etc. We watch them. That's why I say, I reiterate, the topic of that first video was regarding ownership of movies made in the system.
Uh, I'm thinking now, saying to myself, after watching people's vids and that regarding the sequel, Blumhouse sequels, bringing new these characters back, I can't think for the life of me how they're going to do it. They can't. They can't continue the story on the same night because they brought Myers back as a human being, mainly as a human being. Don't tell me all of a sudden they're going to make him spiritual again. Running around with some freshly grown hand as if it was never blown off in the first place and not a single burn scar as if he was never burnt in the first place a la Danielle's sequels in the 80s in the, just him reappearing for the next sequel surely we're not going to have revert back to after all that emphasis on him being brought back in age 40 as, as a human being with the same age as Laurie Show. After all that we went through trying to get our heads around the the narrative for H40, suddenly to have the character reverted back to being this ghost this spiritual ghostly figurative presence. Surely we're not gonna have that. Uh, regardless, Curtis had a knife thrown in her intestines. Surely she can't. She can't just stay for ten minutes in a hospital, in a laying on a hospital bed in her clothes, get a simple band aid, and then up on her feet again, run around on the same night. Surely, the where the sequel, the first sequel takes off, can't be the same night as H40, which it was for the original H2 on the same night as the original H. Surely not. It's just not possible at all. Not. It's. It's just. It can't be worked into the narrative of H40 as that was brought back to be real, to be two real people. The two leads, two real people, human people. Can't see where it's going to go. Haven't, having the fog is where it's going to go. It's going to continue, hopefully not the same night, hopefully we'll have... How on earth are we going to have the shape walking around with a bandage on his hand? And with severe burn scars all over him, up and down. How are we going to have that? How is that going to be a, a, six, a nearly 65 year old man? All bandaged up with severe scarring, burn scarring to his skin, flesh scarring. And with half of a hand missing. How is that going to be intimidating for the audience? How is that going to be worked into the, in, as intimidation to the narrative? How on earth can that, can that be? How can that be? How can that possibly be worked into the narrative? <clears throat> and at the same time, you're the flip side of the coin. How can the audience, if the shape will suddenly now be treated as a spiritual presence, how can the audience be expected to take that as serious? How can the audience be expected to be to lose themselves into the narrative if, if that is suddenly the case? Surely it, it has to take place a, a few months after hate the night of H40. It has to because of Laurie Strode's injuries to her stomach. The blade right, went right in, a good eight, nine inches blade went right into her stomach. Right in, deep, deep. There's just no way it can take place the same night. Now we're going to suddenly get. So therefore, we're going to have to suddenly get a sequel, at least the first one, uh, where we're going to get lots of hu uh, character interaction between. Kairos who we haven't seen for 40 years. How the hell is this first sequel? How on earth are these two sequels going to work? Serious, serious characterization play between characters who we haven't seen for 40 years. How on earth can we, the audience, get involved? How on earth can that possibly work? How can that work? This has proven to me more of a question mark as to its feasibility as to the entry into the franchise we got the other year, H H40. This has proven to be more of a ding dong than H40. How 
what the hell? What on earth are we going to get in these next two sequels? What the fuck are we going to get? And then we'll probably, when we get Laurie Strode, the character dying, I'm just going to stand up and walk out the cinema. Probably vomiting, throwing up as I'm walking. I had just accepted the results of the movie, Halloween H, H Resurrection. I had just accepted that movie. Just got my head around everything. The way Laurie Strode, the character, was handled in the introduction. Everything. The way Myers was handled. The way that all the business with live cam footage. The teens watching it. Um as an entry into the franchise. I had just I had just married my my self up with that movie completely after hating it, loathing it for so many years since since its existence, since its introduction to the franchise. Literally it was about two or three months I had just completely accepted that movie as part of the franchise prior to H forty being announced. Christ, this move, this franchise, I hate for the movie franchise, the Halloween franchise. Fuck! What the hell are we gonna get? Fuck! Your brand, that's the thing on the front, right? Yeah. Multilingual, worldwide product. Right, that's what it affects, yeah. Just be safe. But uh, I will admit it is bigger than I thought it'd be. Which depicted on the cover, you know, with a nice sewn hem in as well. You know, it looks to the eye. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. A nice, neat sewn hem for longevity. But no. Comes out like that. As I say, you could probably sleep on it. It would keep you nice and warm if you're, if you're being locked out for the night. If that's all that can be thrown out the window to you. While you're screaming and shouting in the back garden. But for Christ's sake. It's far from... That in it.